Now! <laughs> Are you Lord Lincoln? Yes. Then I have a warrant for your arrest on a charge of bribery and corruption. No bottles here anyway. It's all pepper. Oh, <laughs> too bad, Rico. At a moment. Good heavens, money. I believe the black orchid is behind this. It's that black orchid smuggling ring. Who else would stand to gain so much by sabotaging a wine trading agreement? compliment you on your selection of wine, Your Excellency. Thank you. But the credit must go to my assistant, Monsieur Montreux. It is a Medoc, Chateau Latteau, of my favorite wine. From the vineyard at Poyac. Yes. Southeast corner, vintage 1783. The year of the Treaty of Versailles. Oh, oh, oh. oh you seem to know a lot about wine, Lord Lincoln. Wine shipping is my family business, you know. I hope this consignment of French wines is the first of many to come here to England from France. The trade treaty between our two countries will ensure that. I think the days of the Black Orchid smuggling ring are numbered. I can hardly wait to sign the treaty on behalf of Her Majesty's government. Are you ready to take it back to Paris, Count? That is my mission. Naturally, I have made the arrangement. Ah! What's going on? Oh, I expect another intruder in the embassy. Bonapartists trying to steal papers and so forth. You don't sound too worried. I'm not. You see, I think your peelers are wonderful. Peelers? What are they? You haven't heard of our wonderful peelers? It's our police force, founded by Sir Robert Peel, the Prime Minister. Look, here, he's making an arrest. Are you all right, Count? Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I just thought I recognized someone. Our government is so impressed by your police force that they have sent our own police chief to London to study their methods. Uh, perhaps you know him, Count, Monsieur de Villefort. Indeed I do. It will be a pleasure to see him again. That can be arranged. More of this excellent wine, Count. Then we must go next door and sign our treaty. Wine, wine everywhere and not a drop to drink. Look, this grate is almost open already. No bottles here anyway. It's all pepper. Oh, too bad, Rico. Wait a moment. Good heavens, money. French money. If it's full of banknotes, how come it's so heavy? <coughs> Are you ready to sign the treaty, Lord Lincoln? Master. Master! Uh, come and look what we found! Jacopo, please don't interrupt me now. It's urgent. These cases of wine, what about them? One of them is full of money. What? Are you sure? Show us. There! What is this? A letter for me? My dear ambassador, the trade treaty shortly to be signed between our two countries will require contracts to be assigned to British shipping companies. I trust that this gift will dispose you to regard the application of my family firm, Lincoln Import and Export Merchants, with favor. I am your obedient servant, Lord Lincoln. Is this true, Lincoln? Of course not. I never wrote that. 
It's a forgery. Bribery. Latent bribery. Is, is that your signature? Yes, but how it got there, I don't know. I mean, this is outrageous. It, it's, it's... He'll be in here, sir. Oh, there you are. Very interesting. Uh, what is this intrusion? Are you Lord Lincoln? Yes. Then I have a warrant for your arrest on a charge of bribery and corruption. But this man is on French soil in this embassy. You cannot arrest him here. It's all right, Your Excellency. I'm an innocent victim of a foul plot. I shall go with him. This looks like all the evidence we need. I'll have that, sir. But the treaty. I'll be back. Lead on, gentlemen. Hey, this is just as difficult for me, sir. I have never had to question a member of the government before. I can only ask you to believe me when I say I am innocent of this charge. Oh, you'll have a fair trial, sir, but evidence is strongly against you. But since the crime you charged me with was committed in the French embassy on French soil, I am therefore allowed to see a French consul? No. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, I suppose you are. Uh, who would that be? His name is the Count of Monte Cristo. Could you get in here? Uh, very well, sir. Or do that. Good evening, officer. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I wonder if you could help me. I want a list of all printing companies in the Dockside area. I am investigating a case of forgery. That's a police matter, sir. No, it involves French currency. Forged francs like these. Are you a French police officer, sir? Shall we say I am working for French justice? Ah, oh, of course. You must be Monsieur de Villefort, the French chief of police, over here to study our methods. Oh, yes, sir. I would expect you, sir. Uh, yes, that's right. Of course, I thought I recognized you. <laughs> you were at the French embassy when we arrested Lord Lincoln and brought him here. If you'd like to see Lord Lincoln, uh, come with me. Lord Lincoln was asking to see a French consul. Uh, a man by the name of uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Ah, oh, yes. I'll be seeing him tonight. I'll ask him to call. Oh, there we are, sir. My dear Count. Uh, no, oh. not the Count. You are too eager. My lord, surely you know Monsieur de Villefort, the head of the French police. Monsieur de Villefort? Yes, your old friend de Villefort. Uh, don't worry, my lord. I'll fetch the French consul, uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, to get you out of this mess. And uh, now, uh, perhaps we can continue, Inspector. Uh, of course, monsieur. <laughs> Some uh, ruffian we caught scavenging round the French embassy, sir. <laughs> Not a good specimen. I am very impressed. Good work, officer. I shall commend you to your superior. Good day. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, uh, about your list of printing works. Oh, yes. I had almost forgotten. I'll get it. <laughs> now, let's see. I should be able to pee for printing. No, perhaps it's under W for works. Oh, no. T for typography. Typography. No, it's got to be under P. Good day, officer. Just a minute. Can't you see I'm busy? There is no way to talk to a distinguished visitor. Oh, there you are, Monsieur de Villefort. Trade directory. What's this? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you was uh, Monsieur de Villefort. I am yes. Monsieur de Villefort. Well, this gentleman here is Monsieur de Villefort. What gentleman? Look, what is going on? I am Monsieur de Villefort, head of the French secret police, doing my tour of inspection. Here are my credentials from the chief constable. But, sir, the gentleman was here just now, just now, said he was you. Don't no, mind, was an imposter. Oh, this proves it. He was a villain. Don't you know a criminal when you see one, you fool? But, sir, you see... Stop for him, you idiot. Get your men together. Yeah, right, sir. Right, men. Oh, did... We don't have no men here at the station, sir. They, they're all out on the beach. What in efficiency? I must have assistance. Get me a man out of the cells to help. This one will do for what we want. Open up, you fool! Is there no such thing as efficiency in the British police force? I'll mention you in my report. I'll have you thrown out. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. I, I don't know what's going on around here. That makes two of us. For wine, Excellency? Chateau Latour? No. I can't touch this stuff now. Everything seems to have gone sour on us. 
What will happen to the treaty? Our government will not be pleased with us if we fail. The most we can do is to press charges against Lincoln and get a conviction as soon as possible. I can't do that. Lincoln is an old friend of mine. I believe the Black Orchid is behind this. It's that Black Orchid smuggling ring. Who else would stand to gain so much by sabotaging a wine trading agreement? Hurry, Fanon. We must get the warehouse cleared out. Risto seems to know far more than we thought. Fortunately, he didn't manage to find out where the notes were forged. And he can't know where the warehouse is, either. That's one consolation, but it may not be long before he does. What do we do about tomorrow morning? Oh, curse it! I forgot. The Black Orchid consignment of wine coming from Bordeaux. We'll stop them coming? We can't do that. We'll have to leave it to chance. At least I won't be there. Where will you go? I'll be at Lincoln's trial. I'm a witness for the prosecution. That is, if Gaston has been working on those French bank papers. Let's see if we can get in from next door. Lincoln's import and export merchants. The plot thickens. Go on, you fools! What kind of Frenchman are you? Get all those cases out of here and into the Lincoln warehouse next door. Hurry! Hurry! We can't get them in there. The place is already full. Then swap them over. Bring everything he's got in there, in here. As long as the police find these smuggle cases in his warehouse, then they won't look any further. <laughs> now, jump to it! finish those bank papers, Gaston. They are nearly ready. <laughs> well, put it over there with the others. Quickly, hurry, hurry. There, listen to this. From Lord Lincoln to Bank of France. I enclose an order for the undermentioned sum with the request for conversion into French francs and the said amount to be sent to me in cash at the French Embassy, London. Your obedient servant, Lincoln. Excellent. That will convict him if nothing else does. He has! Oh, no! He has. oh, no! Everybody out of sight! Stop what you're doing and run for it! Anybody home? No idea of security. Leave the place wide open. It's all right. We're alone now. But we've lost them, most of the team. But at least we know what's going on. Do we? We don't know who the Black Orchid is. Oh, where he is. But I know where he must be tomorrow. At Lord Lincoln's trial. Well, what's the point of knowing if we can't be there ourselves? We're locked in. There is a way out. The river, look. There's a boat. I see no boat. It will be here tomorrow morning at dawn. Heard them say there's a consignment of smuggled wine coming at dawn tomorrow. That's the cruise we're booked on, but we'll have to fight hard for our tickets. So, this is the headquarters of the Black Orchid smuggling ring. Hello, what's this? To be sent to me in cash at the French Embassy. I am your obedient servant, Lincoln. It must be the second page of that forgery. They left in too much of a hurry to notice it. What's this? A button. Let me see. The orchid! 
It's a very vain man who wears the emblem of his crimes on his frock coat. And we'll catch him. For such men, vanity is always their undoing. And buttons, buttons are also their undoing. <laughs> uh, come on now. Let's get some sleep. We're expecting visitors, remember? And maybe, who knows, the Black Orchid himself. This wine is excellent. 18, uh, 1850, the year of our glorious defeat by the British. How can you go on about wine and history at a time like this? My main concern is that a friend's reputation is at stake. A friend of mine and a friend of France. He hasn't a hope of being found innocent. I'm afraid that's true, especially now. Now, what other evidence is there? The French police have found a letter written to the French bank requesting that money be deposited here. It will be produced in court. And now this letter, the French government are beginning to lose interest in the treaty. They don't want to get mixed up in this affair. Oh, I am going to bed. peer of the realm, you are charged with bribery and corruption in that you did as an officer of Her Majesty's government offer a considerable sum of money to the French government as an inducement to procure considerable profit thereby. How do you plead? Not guilty. Proceed with the prosecution. And I will call the first prosecution witness, Monsieur Montreux of the French Embassy. Hmm, what's this? 1815, Chateau Latour. Chateau Latour. Didn't we have some of this last night at the French Embassy? Great heavens! It's all fitting together now. Faster, hurry! Further evidence is provided. Another letter written by Lord Lincoln to the French Bank. The defendant admits that the letter is in his handwriting, but denies writing it. However, read the letter, Monsieur Montreux. <clears throat> to the Bank of France, I enclose an order for the undermentioned sum with a request for conversion into French francs and the said amount... Uh, Go on. Uh, oh, that's all. Uh, there, there, there's, there, there's a page missing. How do you know? That doesn't prove anything. For the conversion into French francs and the said amount... Oh. And the said amount to be sent to me in cash at the French Embassy. Oh. 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 <laughs> Silence! Now, what is this intrusion? This letter is a forgery. I have witnesses to prove it. And who do you say forged these letters? Is he in court? The man is the Black Orchid, or to use his other name, Monsieur Montreux. Hello, hello. Anything I can do for you, Monsieur? Oh, oh. oh dear, I appear to have spilt a little wine. Such a pity. And it was Monsieur Montreux's favorite. I thought it was destined for you. And such a good year for Chateau Latour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> silence! Silence in court or I shall clear the hole! There. Now you, Lincoln. There. Uh, it is nice to sign my name. 
I thought I was destined to be a number for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, this calls for champagne. But perhaps, Count, you would do us the honor of allowing us to couple your name with our toast to our two countries. Honestly, the trouble you have to go to to get a drink round here. You can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> the Italian for be quiet, Count. Don't you like his singing, Jacopo? No. no visit to Venice is complete without a leisurely cruise down her waterways, serenaded by a fine-voiced gondolier. Look, Jacopo. St. Mark's Cathedral and the Doge's Palace. What are we going to see, Master? One of the most famous paintings in the world, The Judgment of Judas by Umberto Borsini. They've gone to enormous trouble to get this picture from Verona. We've come all this way just to see it? Yes, and to do some painting myself, of course. Mm. Can we go home after that? No, we must stay here to see the Madonna of the Sea by Luigi di Fabriano, which is coming from Verona next week. Hey, look, there is the art gallery. Oh, at last. Oh, oh. Be careful, Signor Jacopo. What? Have you understood every word we've been saying? See, you say I am a good singer. I am as good as to sing in Aida, eh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Master, the gallery attendant is drying Jacopo's clothes. He will not be long. Good. Hmm, I wonder who's here. Ah, uh, all these people. Uh, that is the Duke of Padua, a great art collector. And that is Signor Bellini, the curator and owner of the gallery. Rico, enjoy the exhibition. Ah, oh, Count, how good of you to come. Do you know the Duke of Padua? No. But I have heard much of you. And I of you. And this is Signor Lombardo. He is the nation's leading art critic. Delighted to meet you. 
I see you have gathered quite a crowd. Mostly local critics, but Signor Lombardo's is the opinion which counts. Uh, come, let us unveil the masterpiece. Uh, perhaps, Your Grace, you would do us the honor of pulling the tassel. The pleasure is mine, Signor Bellini. Signore, Signore, it is with exquisite anticipation that I have awaited for this moment to see at last in our own gallery Umberto Borsini's masterpiece, The Judgment of Judas. Meraviglioso! <laughs> Gentlemen, this painting is a forgery. A forgery? You don't mean it. I do. Look, the colors are not so deep as Borsini usually used, and the brush strokes are timid, invariably the mark of a forgery. Are you questioning the opinion of an expert of Signor Lombardo's experience? It is undoubtedly genuine. Si, 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 forgery si, indeed. Si, <laughs> si, Good evening, sir. Is the Count of Monte Cristo in residence? He is, sir, but he is not seeing anyone. Oh, that is most unlike him. Oh, I'm very worried. Ever since he came back from Venice last week, he has locked himself in his studio, and he will take no food. And uh, no wonder. What are you giving him? Sand, which is... It's an idea the Count picked up in England. It's a whole meal which can be eaten with one hand while working. Oh, extraordinary. Well, perhaps the Count and I shall meet at this week's exhibition in Venice. Good night. Uh, good night, Your Grace. Oh, Count, how are you? Never felt better. Oh. Who was that at the door? The Duke of Padua. To add insult to injury, eh? Well, you must get ready at once. We're leaving for Verona. But, Count, that is a long journey, and I must prepare some food for the trip. There is nothing in the house. Prepare food? You are joking, of course. <laughs> <laughs> It looks as if we got here just in time. Do you see what I see? Isn't that the evil Monsieur de Villefort's coach? It is. I thought he might be mixed up in this somewhere. And I am probably right in thinking that the Madonna of the Sea might go the same way as the last picture. It must have been switched. Have a sandwich. They're rather dry. Mm. Quick, out of sight, both of you. Steady, you clumsy idiots! It's a valuable picture, not a flagstone. Yes, it is in good hands, senor. Into the coach now, carefully. Yes, we'll get it safe to Venice. The Duke will be well pleased. Arrivederci, senor. Right, Fennel, to Venice. But next stop is... Next stop where? I didn't hear it. But there's only one way to find out. Follow them, Rico, and don't let them see you. Would you like another sandwich? I found a fresher one. <laughs> no, thank you, Jacob. We stopped. Their coach has disappeared, Master. It must have turned off somewhere. What do we do now? We'll pull off the road and unharness the horses. A Rico can hide the coach in these woods, and we'll continue our pursuit on horseback. My word, look at that. If that's the home of a forger, it seems to be a very profitable land for somebody. You have brought the original. Oh, see, see. It is beautiful. Is the master here? The master? You call him the master? I am the master. I am the genius. I am the greatest art forger of all time. Tomorrow, my great work goes to Venice. I must put the finishing touches. 
Silencio. You heard something? Perhaps it was the wind. All day long the wind howls and the panes rattle. I'm gonna tell the master my working conditions are not good enough. What do you tell me? Oh, master, I say how good are my working conditions. Just what I was saying too, master. The Villefort, have you brought the painting? Yes, master. Oh, meravillous. The Duke of Padua. I might have guessed. Well, what are we waiting for? We've got all the evidence we need. Yes, but who in Italy would believe my word against his? If only we could hear what they're saying. Oh, well, time for a sandwich. <laughs> Mamma mia! I didn't do it! I'm innocent! Come quietly! It was him! Don't <laughs> panic, Signor Niccolo. It was merely a squirrel in the trees. Yeah. Look, just a piece of stale bread. How from interesting. A sandwich, an English delicacy, I believe. I've only ever seen one. Where was it now? The Count of Monte Cristo. Huh? How could this have got here unless he's somewhere not far away? We must leave here at once. Niccolo, bring the picture. Hide the original. Perno, get the coach. Get on, get my sword and guns. Don't, we have no time to lose. Don't do it. Show up. <laughs> well, did you ever see such panic? <laughs> well, what do we do now? I saw where they hid the pictures, so we just help ourselves and take them to Venice. Then we appear at the exhibition and confront the Duke with the original. It's too easy. And the exhibition isn't till tomorrow anyway. We just find Rico, retrieve the coach, and go to Venice. Master, Master, come quickly. The coach. The coach? I hope you hid it well. Too well. It's disappeared. What? Disappeared? Completely vanished. I went away to find some more branches to hide it with, and when I came back, it was gone. I told you, I left it here. He left it here? Oh! What have you done, Jacopo? Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Just fallen over a tree stump. Oh! How strange. What's strange? This tree stump. It appears to have the Count's family crest on it. It's the top of the coach, Jacopo. We must have driven into a quagmire. You mean the coach is buried in the ground? Yes. I thought our luck was too good to last. Oh, but it would take 20 strong men to get it out of there. Or you and me, and Rico and two horses. Have we any rope, Rico? Plenty, thank goodness. Where is it? In the coach. Oh, Rico! The Villefort. You know Monte Cristo better than I do. What is he likely to do next? I should think he is following us at this very moment. Then I'm glad we got away from the house. Do you think he knows something? If he does, he'll be making his way back to Venice for the exhibition. And we can always ensure that he doesn't arrive. When we get nearer, I shall set up an ambush for him on this very road. Well, it certainly isn't a royal coach, is it? 
And you don't look much like a count. <laughs> well, we must go back to their house now and get the pictures, and then we must be on our way. Now the coach will be traveling fast. So one of you will stand in the middle of the road and make the horses rear. What will the other do? Go for the driver? And use him as a hostage to make sure the others do what they're told. How do we know it's the Count's coach? Idiot! You've seen it before. It's blue and highly polished. And he's got his coat of arms on the back. And he has two gray horses. Now we must be getting back. Don't fail me. Rico. I've just seen the Villefort's coach going round the corner. He must be planning something. Drive on slowly, and we'll be ready if anything happens. Could this be the Count's? Nah, he's going too slowly. Looks like some scruffy local farmer. <laughs> Funny sort of a coach for a farmer. Still, it's not blue, and the horses are piebald, not gray. So it's not him. Petty. I was getting quite excited. <laughs> Look, he's going in that puddle. Look, there's his coat of arms. It is the car. We've been double crossed. And stop. After them. Open the exhibition of the Madonna of the Sea a day early at the special request of the Duke. So without yeah, further ado, the Duke Excuse me a moment. Your Grace. I am afraid I have been called away on rather urgent business, so I shall have to leave you in a moment. But of course, not before unveiling Fabriano's masterpiece. I suppose it's no surprise that the Duke wanted to have the exhibition a day early. He may have left by the time we get there. And what about my bath? I didn't even have time to clean up. And just our luck to get Aida here again. You like Aida? Encore. A pesto. Fast. Hurry. I thought you liked it, Count. There's a time and a place for everything. Presto, presto. Excuse me, sir. Wanted a bath, didn't you? <laughs> well, at least no one will be able to complain about dry sandwiches. Ladies and gentlemen, Luigi Di Fabriano's immortal masterpiece, The Madonna of the Sea. Oh, oh. meraviglioso! Now all we want is for the Count of Monte Cristo to tell us... ...that it's a forgery. <laughs> Look at that blemish on the Madonna's toenail. But perhaps this will be more conclusive evidence. <laughs> that painting is no great loss to the world of art. A good forgery, but worthless. It is worthless now, but it is surely not a forgery. How can you be so sure? I have the original here. Rico? That is the original? How do you know which is the original? I was hoping perhaps you could tell me, Signor Lombardo. You are the expert. Uh, but surely it is this one. Then perhaps this will change your mind. Oh, oh, no, it was so beautiful. All my life I have loved this painting, and now... Signor Count, what have you done? You have saved the masterpiece only to destroy it with your own hands. No, Signor Bellini. The original is safe. Jacopo! This is the original. That, Signor Lombardo, is a forgery. I did it myself. It took me nearly a week. 
So that's what you were doing all that time. I'm glad you appreciate my work so much, Signor Lombardo. I couldn't have done better myself. Perhaps I should call you by your proper name, Signor Niccolo. The most notorious and perhaps the most talented forger in Italy. It wasn't me! I am innocent! It was him! Him! He kept me prisoner! I was kept a prisoner by him! <laughs> Sandwich, anybody? I don't know how to thank you, Count. Nothing gives me more pleasure than to see ordinary people enjoying a work of art. Then let us keep it hidden no longer. Do me the honor of unveiling it. Ladies and gentlemen, Luigi de Fabriano's Madonna of the Sea. Oh, bravo. 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 Well, what do you think of it, Count? I couldn't have done a better myself. What? Uh, what? Uh, oh, Count, you, you're leaving the concert early. Uh, oh, you're, you're not the Count. <clears throat> Excuse me, but whose coach is this? Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, I beg your pardon. I was looking for the coach belonged to... Who did you say? The Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, he could be just the person I am looking for. Will he help an old man in distress? He has been known to. <laughs> Perhaps we can help you. Uh, come in. <laughs> no one invites you in. <laughs> Off you go. Now, what's the trouble? It would be nice if we could solve a mystery on our own without the Count's help. <laughs> Who are you, sir? My name is Herr Furtwängler. I'll see your problem. I am a composer, and love for music has ruined my life. You hear that music being played now? Yes, the great Wolfgang Schulberg. <laughs> but I composed that. You are lucky to have such a great pianist to play your works. But I have never met him, nor he me. But I have only to compose a piece of music, and within a week, he is playing it. You mean he's stealing your manuscripts? I think not. But surely there is no other way this could happen? There is. But it is a long story. Perhaps you would like to come to my house, where I can explain better. Yes. We have an hour or so. Look, they're only at the interval. You've done it again, Wolfgang. A beautiful performance of a beautiful composition. Are you ready to receive congratulations? No, please, Herr Kaufmann. Herr Schulberg will be delighted to receive you, Herr Count. Wolfgang, may I introduce the Count of Monte Cristo? My congratulations, Herr Schulberg. A brilliant new sonata. I suspect you've been greatly inspired by the influence of Hermann Richter. I... Herr Schulberg owes influence to nobody, my dear Count. I don't think he has ever heard of Richter. He was a very popular composer of 20 years ago. I used to play his works a great deal myself. Then you must tell me more about this Richter. His most famous work was his Italian sonata, 
Wolfgang is very tired, Herr Count. I would ask you nonsense. I would be enchanted if the Count would play to me. I feel embarrassed to play before such a master of the keyboard. But if you insist. Sonata was the last piece that was ever published under my old name of Richter. Every time I have written since under the name of Fort Wengler, it has been published by this man Wolfgang Schulberg. But why did you change your name? Uh, it was for personal reasons. I had to start a new life and I left my own town of Heidelberg to forget my old unhappiness there and came here to Vienna. Do you know anything about this uh, Wolfgang Schulberg? Nothing, except that he has all my ideas and publishes them before I do. But how? Some sort of telepathy. Telepathy? What is it? It is when a thought is transferred from one mind to another. But surely you don't believe in this telepathy? But I do. You see, my wife died many years ago and left me with a son. He was all I had, but I was so wrapped up in my music that I hardly took any notice of him from one day to the next. So, eventually, he left me and I haven't seen him since. But when I wrote this composition, I felt something telling me he was dead. Then I changed my name and came here to Vienna. And ever since then, my tunes have been shared by this Wolfgang Schulberg. Uh, but have you thought that your manuscripts might have been stolen? It is impossible. My manuscripts never leave this room. And at night, no one could get in because Wolf is an excellent watchdog. He is my eyes and ears, aren't you, Wolfie? Do you never go out? Seldom. Sometimes I do go into a trance. It happens every time I play a tune of mine. What tune? This one, my Heidelberg Minuet. It seems as if there must be something in this telepathy. Look, he's in a trance. We must leave him. Let us decide what to do. Perhaps we should consult an expert in these things. Make way, give way, please, for the Archduke. Make way, give way for the Archduke. Bah. One night out to hear my favorite music, and this is what happens. Make sure that the maestro has recovered for my private soiree at the palace tomorrow night, or I will hold you personally responsible. What's happened? Why is the concert finished early? The pianist has collapsed. He passed out in his dressing room. He cannot go on with the concert. Have you seen the Count of Monte Cristo? He was with the pianist when it happened, but he rushed off somewhere. We must find him. Yes, drive on. Did you see what I saw? Yes, the Vilfors man. If we are up against him, I think we're going to need the count after all. Look. Frau Brunhild. Wizardry, hypnotism, spellbinding. Or she should be able to tell us whether there is anything in this idea of telepathy. Thank you for your advice, Frau Brunhild. I hope it will be of some use to you. It's perfectly possible. I'm sure it explains a lot. A good day to you. Count Jacopo, Rico, what was she telling you that was perfectly possible? Telepathy. Oh, to 
But tell us, what happened at the concert? Well, Wolfgang Schulberg asked me to play a tune, which I did. And he fell into a trance and collapsed. It seemed he was under a spell. What tune was it? Richter's Heidelberg Minuet. Richter, that was the name. We have just met Richter. He played that tune to us and went into a trance too. You have been seeing things. He died years ago. No, no, he changed his name and came to Vienna. He told us that himself. If what you say is true, it confirms something very suspicious. It seemed to me that not only is Schulberg under some supernatural spell, which made him go into a trance when I played that music, but he is in the clutches of that man Kaufman, who is exploiting his talent for his own profit. And we know who else. Who? Monsieur de Villefort. De Villefort? Yes, we saw his coach outside the concert hall. Quickly! Come on, come on! Waity, waity! The master is coming to see you. But how strange it was that as soon as Christo started playing Richter's Heidelberg minuet, Schulberg went into a trance. If that tune can send one man into a trance... <laughs> well, how is our maestro? None the better for seeing you. You are playing at the Archduke's palace tomorrow night. Quite. Anyway, Schulberg. You have got work of your own to do. Yes, you must study this manuscript. It is a new piece which you will play for the Archduke tomorrow night. Gaston, Tenon, Monsieur. Monsieur. Leave him now and go and collect the manuscript of the other half of tomorrow night's concert. And I don't want just any manuscript this time. I want you to get me So you don't think it's possible they could be stealing your manuscripts? Oh, no, Count. When I have written them, I, I roll them up like this. And then I place them over here at night, where they are guarded by Wolf. And Wolf is here all the time? Wolf is my eyes. I don't see well. But we go out from time to time, but nobody could get in here. That window pane would be the only way in. You see, the slightest sound, and he investigates. Wolf? Wolf? What is it? Here, boy. Here. Curse it. The old man is with him, Fernand. We must be careful. Post? You see? Wait a moment. What? I saw nothing. Jacobo, Rico, follow the dog. Right. So you dismissed the possibility of being robbed. But you forgot your own dog. <laughs> I can't believe it. That score will be played at the palace tomorrow night. The palace? Yes. That is where Schulberg is giving a recital for the Archduke. To what advantage to Wolfgang Schulberg, I don't know. That was only my old Heidelberg minuet. What's that? Aha! The very one Monsieur de Villefort asked for. Great snakes! I'm alive! Yeah! Hurry! What in heavens is going on out there? So it was you who has been robbing me all this time, you little wretch. <laughs> I am so relieved to see you. Something dreadful has happened. A man has just been here. He has threatened to harm my family unless I cooperate with him. What does he want you to do? 
You know that tune you mentioned when you came before? The one that sends a pianist into a trance? He wants me to cast a spell which will transfer the trance to... to... The Archduke of Austria. Hmm? How did you know? And not only that, but to the whole of the palace household as well. He wants them all sent into a trance. What can I do? Is it possible to do that? It may be. But why should he want it? Well... The palace contains Europe's finest collection of precious stones. I'm beginning to understand. But can you help me, Count? I'm in despair. Of course. And you can help me. The man said I have to be outside the palace before the concert. I'll be there too. All you have to do is to transfer the spell to their four accomplices in the crime. And I know who they are. You keep your rendezvous with the gang. Then this is what we'll do. <laughs> this is quite like old times. I haven't been here for years. I used to be a regular performer for the Archduke, you know. <laughs> it was kind of the Archduke to invite us all. I can't... Oh. Are you ready, Frau Brunhild? Yes, I think so. Good. Now, don't forget, as soon as you hear the music begin for the second time. Good luck. Count, what are you doing here? I'm here to help you. Don't ask any questions. Trust me. No, don't play that piece. What do you think you're doing? I, I, I... Ladies and gentlemen, Wolfgang Schulberg. What the devil is happening? It's a count. We're done for. Do something. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not Wolfgang Schulberg. I don't know who this man is, but he's an imposter. Now, get it right, get it right. Gaston, get that man off the piano. Stop at nothing. Oh, what is the matter with me? Butterfingers. It should be beginning to work. permission to leave. What is all this? Well, explain yourself. Your Highness, I must apologize for this deception. But my friends and I have just foiled an attempt by these villains to rob you of your entire collection of precious stones. Really? For jewel thieves, they're unusually tired. <laughs> Look at them. They are under a hypnotist's spell. The music sent them into a trance. The spell was meant for you. <laughs> I'd have more musical appreciation than to fall asleep in the middle of Richter's music. <laughs> Richter? My old friend, Richter? I, I thought you would... Oh, what are you doing here? It's all too difficult to explain, Your Highness. I, I, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> then begin by playing me my favorite gypsy dance, which you used to play for us here. <laughs> I'm sure that the Count can play it better than I. I have never heard my music played like that. <laughs> if that was you playing, you are an excellent pianist, sir. I am honored to be so flattered by two great pianists. Two? Who is the other? Ah, you have not met. Herr Furtwängler. Uh, 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 Herr Richter. Oh, yes, of course. Richter? Father! It, uh, it is my son! My son! Wolfgang! 
I'm comfy, your father. <laughs> Alive after all these years. I'm still composing. <laughs> so it is your music I have been playing all this time. I knew it. Oh, how could you have known? Oh, just telepathy, I suppose. Telepathy? I can say it. Telepathy. Telepathy. <laughs> telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> of land yet, Jacopo. Uh, we should sight the Spanish coast in roughly 23 and a half minutes. Until then, let us enjoy some hot coffee. Mother of heaven! We're under attack! Down, men! Rico, get down! No, master. Rico collects arrows. Oh, a well-feathered arrow. We're being attacked by a lone sailor in a small boat. Let me see. <laughs> Another arrow for your collection, Rico. Such an accurate shot. But why does he attack us? Uh, look, he's showing the white flag. He must want to come aboard. Lower the rope ladder. Welcome aboard, sir. But are you friend or enemy? <laughs> A friend, I trust. If you are the Count of Monte Cristo. I am, sir. But why the arrows if you are a friend? To attract your attention. And I needed the practice. <laughs> Have you not come to Spain, Count, to investigate the troubles on the border between France and ourselves? Correct, sir. We understand a mysterious lady is controlling the roads and demanding huge tolls from travelers. Yes, that's Countess Serrero. She's in league with Camacho, a crooked magistrate. They've driven innocent folk from their homes, and they hope to run the whole border area. And what is your interest in this? I've lost my home and been outlawed by Camacho. Now, with my followers, I live in the mountains. My name is Pedro. Not Pedro Bandito. <laughs> You've heard of me. The very man we came to see. Then, sir, will you come with me now to see the infamy the wicked countess wreaks on our people? Sir, you have only to lead the way. The village of Catilla, where Rodrigo, one of my men, is about to be executed by Camacho's militia. Then we must help him right away. I have horses tethered in the valley. How much longer must we wait for the entertainment, Camacho? But a few minutes, Countess. The prisoner, Rodrigo, has been protesting. Bah! I want excitement. Giorgio, do something. Don't just sit there. <laughs> yes, Countess! Do... That wasn't very exciting. Countess, here comes the prisoner. At last. This will give me pleasure. Almost noon, Countess. Good. I've waited long enough. 
I trust you're prepared to meet your maker. Nothing can save you now. Bandido will help me. Soon, Pedro Bandido will be tied to that stake, too. Giorgio, give the orders to fire. Right, sir! Ready? Take aim! Wait for it! I, I knew you'd help me, Petro. Quick! No time to waste! Whoa! Cristo! Cristo! Mercedes! So you are the wicked Countess Severo. I never thought to see you again. I never thought to see you shamed by evil. I must talk to Cristo. And let it be soon. Yes, I once loved that woman. But she married another. Who died in disgrace. It seems she has fled France and changed her name. She was not wicked in the past. <laughs> Disappointment can change a person's character. You will still fight with us against her schemes, huh? More strongly than ever. <laughs> but enough of this. Where's the faithful Rico? He's on guard, down in the pass. <coughs> What's happening? Your old friend Giorgio. You must come and see my master. Put me down, you lump! Put me, I'll kill you! It's Rico. He's brought us our evening meal. <laughs> I will, don't come out, so. I'll kill you when I get out here. Found our old friend, Giorgio. <laughs> Put him down, Rico. Uh, what do you want here? I work for the Countess Cervero. She sends you this message. Edmond, I must see you. Come at dawn, Mercedes. Tell your mistress I will be there. Now go. I like some water. Here, sir. <laughs> dawn. Where is Cristo? Will he come to me? So Mercedes is guarded. I'll make sure I'm not announced. What's going on? Quiet, Mercedes. Only you must know I'm here. Come inside. This is my private chamber. No one will overhear us. You live in greater finery than when your home was in the poor quarter of Marseille. I've struggled for all this, but now I'm wealthy. I have power. Yes, by cheating and destroying others' lives. Ah, oh, if I hadn't taken all this, somebody else would. But look, Christo, half of this could be yours. Join me. Share my wealth and power. Soon I'll control all the borderlands. Is that why you asked me here? To persuade me to join your criminal ways? Together, we could be the richest pair in Europe. Madame, you forget the Edmond Dantes you knew when you were the young Mercedes. I am not to be tempted. You'll regret this. Madame, you've deceived me. So! I am spied on. You'll pay for being obstinate. We shall see, Senor Camacho. And now, a very good morning to you. Well 
done, men. What treachery is this? You are under arrest, Crystal. Arrest? On what charge? For perverting the course of justice when you release the outlaw, Rodrigo. You will be tried this afternoon. Sentence you to death! Take him away! The devil is come. <laughs> Let the devil, sir! Just Pedro Bandido! Pedro Bandido! God! Arrest him! <laughs> Not so fast, gentlemen. There'll be no more false arrest today. Do something, fool! Accept your authority! All right! I sentence you to... Case dismissed. This is madness! Don't worry, Countess! I'll arrest these dogs! Throw down your bows! Ah, put me down or I'll shoot! Rico says you want. Pedro, drag a bow. You need a cooler head, Giorgio. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Good aim, Rico. <laughs> ah! Master, we are being followed. I think it's the Countess. Then carry on. I shall stay and talk to her. Madame, is it me you wish to see? Count, your honesty has made me regret my mistakes. We must talk. Let's ride along this ledge. I see now I was wrong. Camacho made me believe we could control all this. I thought we could take power and wealth from all around, as far as the eye can see. Look down there. At what? The valley. You'll have to go nearer the edge to see. What am I supposed to look at? Your doom! And now you're out of the way, I shall control as far as the eye can see. <laughs> For the sake of our old love, I trusted you once too often. Next time, there can be no mistake. So, my friends, the Countess must never be trusted. We should have stayed on guard. And no one could have helped. But we must look forward. Where is Pedro? He's out on patrol to make sure no soldiers followed us. What can this mean? These rocks are newly put here to block the way. Now! What? Ah, what's happening? Ah, ah, ah. At last! We've caught Pedro Bandido. No for revenge! <laughs> At last, Giorgio, you move quickly for once. You must be pleased with yourself, Camacho. Oh, yes. I've long wanted to bring Pedro Bandido to trial. No. Let's not waste time with trials. Cristo is dead. Now is a chance to get rid of this other enemy. Pedro is very late. I fear he may be in trouble. Should we go after him? We must. To horse! We must find him! That is where we shall put him. A terrible way to die. Only the worst is good enough for Pedro Bandido. But it's only sand. Look. Quicksand. Yes, 
And be quick about getting him into it. Come, Giorgio, we throw him. Uh, uh, you'll never get away with this. Silence! Get rid of him. Look! Riders disappearing across the plains. There's someone crying for help below. Help! It's Pedro. He seems half buried. Come on, he's stuck in quicksand. Cristo! Thanks be to heaven and all the angels. Quick, Rico. Take me by the ankles and swing me across to Pedro. I must lie flat so I don't sink. Pull, Rico! <sighs> Oh, you saved my life. Never mind that. Who put you there? The Countess and her cronies. It's they who've just ridden off towards Castillo. We must get out of them. When I've rested, I'll get back to camp and bring my men down to Castillo. Good. We'll destroy the Countess's schemes and free the border for honest travelers. We're being followed! I think it's crystal. That's impossible! But it is crystal! We must get to Castillo and bring out the militia! Look for Giorgio and Camacho. I must find Mercedes. It's gone quiet. Perhaps they haven't followed. Good day, Senor Magistrate. <laughs> no one will be able to see me behind this pillar. <laughs> so someone tries to hide from Rico. For the sake of our past, you must yield to justice. So, you threaten a defenseless woman with your sword. Ah, you always were a romantic fool. Sleep well, Giorgio. Master, may Rico help? The battle is over. <clears throat> the magistrate is ready for the dock. And we are ready to return to our ship. I hope you'll have no more need to shoot your arrows, Pedro. <laughs> I think not. Thanks to you, adios. At last, I can finish my drink. Uh. This coffee is stone cold. <laughs> <laughs>